All right, all right. So uh, I got a request. Um, after uh, a couple of people have seen the videos on these uh, these warriors that I did the other video on the uh, MIA ones that I ended up doing a little customization uh, mod on it by you know adding the uh, the extra PVC plastic inserts as you can see the outline for them and also right here where I cut. So I'm going to be showing, not really showing, but uh, I'm going to be giving a little bit of a of a lesson on how to do it. Sorry for the mess. This is a new house we just moved into. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I, I just got these pants right here. They're uh, CCM lowers, uh, pro return from the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. So um, you know we'll be we'll be doing we'll be doing something on those. Anyway, so uh, what you're gonna need is. A really sharp pair of scissors or in my case I actually have razor blades really sharp razor blades string black or white uh, I don't have a blue one anymore so I'm just gonna pretend you know this is blue so uh, blue or whatever color your gloves are you're also going to need this um, one thing that I learned when I was younger my mom taught me she said that uh, no matter how old you are, no matter what, who you are, what you are, you're always going to need these. You know, a good needle and a good thread is always going to be a good, good thing for any man or any woman. So, uh, you know, a good set of needles. Actually, these are my main ones, and these are my backups. Now, I've actually started to tap into the backups because you see right here, this one right here, those are running down because I've been putting them over here. And uh, if you see right here, these are the main ones. This one's bent. That's literally my last one, so I'm going to start tapping these. Also, in some cases, when you do modification for other things, you're also going to need elastic. Measuring tape for cloth. It's basically a whole sewing kit, believe it or not. You know, you got your, uh, your pin cushion. Yep, a pin cushion. I don't mean a fat person. And... Um, your pins. Uh, that, that's actually something else, never mind. You're also going to need this. This is actually a pretty important tool. This is a thread cutter. Uh, it's got a really sharp needle right here. And uh, if you remove that little thing, sorry, can't seem to focus very well. If you remove that, that's actually going to be an even sharper little thing. And this little thing right here is a blade. Um, and see right there those are broken needles and uh, bent needles this one this bent one right here I used that with the pliers to do really uh, hard jobs so we're going to go ahead and just go into it so what I did with these gloves I had an old pair of Eagle X70 gloves that were made for Chris Draper from the uh, I think 2002 2001 or 2003 years I don't know which one it was I know that's when he, he was last using Eagle gloves and uh, yes I know I understand a lot of you people think he actually was wearing Hespeller but he had a contract with Hespeller for an endorsement but he loved Eagle X70 gloves so much that all he, he did was uh, he would have Eagle write Hespeller across the cuff and uh, right here the thumb was actually eagle so if you paid really close attention and looked really close it was actually like a small you know really hard to see but like small little eagle right here logo um, anyway so those gloves I got them on a trade uh, for a pair of Nike gloves that I used to have I fucking hated them sorry excuse the language but I really hated them so I got rid of them um, so I, I got rid of them for the uh, for the Hespeller gloves, which, you know, I, I got him in hopes to give to a friend as a gift because he was a huge uh, Chris Draper and a big Red Wings fan, but uh, my hatred for the Red Wings and, and uh, my loss of that friendship became into me saying, fuck it, might as well use them for something, right? So I got these in the mail. These are pretty beat up. You can still see uh, what I had to do with the, with the palm right here, cut off the second layer because it was just totally shredded and had to sew some of it. This one, as you can see, is still pretty shredded right there, but I left that second layer. These are goat kangaroo palms, and uh, as much as I used to love them, I actually hate them now because they smell so bad. No matter how you sanitize them, goat kangaroo palms get this weird, weird smell, like a dirt, dirt metallic smell. 
And if you're one of those people who has like a sensitive tongue like I do or a sensitive nose where you can smell or taste metal, you know what I'm talking about. And imagine it in your hands. Anyway, so with my sharp little razor blade, and I'm going to actually be using a flashlight so you can see it help maybe better. No? I don't know. Can you see that? All right. Anyway, so you can see the incisions right there on each single one. So I just cut it open and I did it everywhere, even the fingers, believe it or not. And uh, even on these over here, I actually did it from down here at the bottom. And so you just basically make sure that everything is uh, is going to fit correctly. So I measured, of course, and I did it, you know, the uh, the redneck or the Mexican way, which is uh, measured with my thumbs, and uh, you know, with with the thumb is too big, with the thumb is too little for this one, you know, things like that. And I basically just took out each single, um, e e you know, each single PVC uh, insert from each single slot and just properly, you know, correctly inserted them. Now, as far as the fingers, the one on the, the Hespeller gloves didn't come with the inserts on the fingers. I know that's weird, but apparently Chris Stripper didn't like them. So I ended up gutting the, uh, this little thing right here on the Draper gloves. Just gutted that, and uh, there was a bunch of separate long line along inserts right here, so I cut that and turned it into all the finger ones. So that's basically it. it it's it, it sounds simple, but I can tell you it took me four and a half hours to cut it, measure, and you know insert each single one correctly, and also go and meticulously you know sew everything. You really have to look really close to actually be able to see the inseam marks. The only one that is actually the most visible is this one right here. That's literally it. All the other ones you'll be hard pressed to find. And uh, you know, I actually do throw these gloves around at people and, be, and tell them, hey, find where I sewed them. They'll only point that one out. They won't be able to point anything out. I also did it to this right here. This uh, didn't come with the one right here. I left the one in the middle alone because I like the flexibility. And I put the one right there as well. On the inside right here, this didn't have anything, so I put that in. The same with the thumb lock, it wasn't there, so I put that in. And the same with this other one as well, I put that in too. So I basically took this glove, which was a, a really soft, soft glove. Think think of the equivalent of a sponge or 90s gloves that didn't come with them. And I, you know, I, I beefed them up, and now they're literally my favorite pair. So I'm actually going to send these to get repalmed and uh, maybe put like a mesh gusset on the thumb and then I do go, uh, no, do a Mustang palms like uh, James Wisniewski does because I really, I really want to try the feel of, um, of Mustang palms. I keep hearing great things that it's better than Nash, better than Clarino, so I really want to go ahead and try that. So that's it. And uh, enjoy gutting your gloves and making your own DIY projects.